At the time of our nation's founding, no one could have anticipated the explosive growth in presidential powers and responsibilities that have accrued over 200 years. Though the Founding Fathers feared a dominant presidency and imagined legislative and judicial counterweights, the reach of the White House is now globally unrivaled. Whether one favors or fears the escalation of presidential power, few would dispute that the scope of that power is profoundly undersold in its current architecture. Many Hollywood producers live and work out of a state's ten times the size of the White House. We propose a new executive air right that would extend block to block over the White House and neighboring buildings and up to the 555-foot height of the National Monument to its south. Our proposal hinges on a more nuanced reading of surrounding zones of statecraft and a White House superstructure that is more agile in shaping and responding to those pressures and interests. 21st century presidencies will be able to reapportion and reimagine executive organization to suit their time and their needs. In the new executive air right, new structures will rise to meet each new president's assessment of their times and their hopes for America's future. Some may choose to dismantle or reorient the air right architectures of their predecessors. Some will simply use the space at hand, and others will imagine ambitious new organizations reaching out to other centers of power or defending against their incursion. Our first conjecture for the executive airspace imagines a structure biased towards Congress and its multifaceted concerns, but rising and opening on its western flank to the diplomatic and military districts of the Capitol and beyond. The executive air right is both a continuum and a surface for the expression of presidential power. Within its bounds, a new mix of international, domestic, and personal spaces. At its envelope, a mapping of presidential priorities and territories, the times and forces that shape them. Domestic policy has immediate international consequences, and the opposite. 21st century presidencies must propose more fluid international and interdepartmental solutions to complex problems. As Nina Huchigian and Mona Sutphen argue in their recent book, The Next American Century, in order to keep Americans secure and prosperous, you need international collaboration and cooperation. It didn't used to be the case, but now major threats like terrorist activity and pandemic viruses cannot be met by one country acting alone. International rules, institutions, and networks will replace unilateral action.